Hello, this video is presented by the SIR Medical Student Council. My name is Ramsey Kavaz, and today we will be discussing portal vein embolization. This shows the outline for the presentation. Please use it to navigate the presentation as you see fit. The purpose of this presentation is to serve as a digestible introduction to the portal vein embolization procedure. Portal vein embolization, or PVE, is an adjunctive pre-surgical procedure performed by interventional radiologists and patients requiring extensive hepatic resections for tumor removal. As its name suggests, this procedure involves embolizing either the right or left portal vein in order to promote hypertrophy of the contralateral lobe, thusly reducing the risk of post-surgical hepatic insufficiency. Some relevant terminology for understanding this procedure is listed below. The first is future liver remnant, or FLR. This refers to the volume of liver that will be remaining after the planned hepatectomy. It is calculated using CT images acquired prior to the procedure and is a major predictor of post-liver resection complications. Another term important to know is a standardized future liver remnant, or SFLR. This is a modified version of the FLR that is normalized to patient's body size. Historically, in patients with normal liver function, a preoperative SFLR of less than 20% has been used as an indication for PVE. Embolization of the portal veins supplying the tumor-bearing lobe will promote presurgical hypertrophy of the contralateral non-tumorous lobe, thereby increasing the SFLR and making borderline surgical candidates eligible for major hepatic resections. Hypertrophy following PVE is a time-dependent function, and typically repeat imaging is obtained approximately six weeks following PVE to ensure adequate increase in SFLR prior to hep hepatectomy. Generally, PVE is utilized to promote hypertrophy of the left lobe in the context of planned extended right hepatectomy. PVE is not generally used in the context of planned left hepatectomy since the right lobe of the liver tends to be large enough to be able to compensate without hypertrophy. The following are indications for patients with resectable hepatic tumors. A normal liver with an SFLR less than 20%, extensive chemotherapy with an SFLR less than 30%, and cirrhosis or advanced fibrosis with an SFLR less than 40%. Absolute contraindications for the PVE procedure include clinical portal hypertension, extensive invasion of the portal vein precluding catheter maneuvering, or complete portal vein occlusion. Relative contraindications include extrahepatic METs, tumor, in the expected FLR, tumor blocking safe access to the portal venous system, biliary dilatation, mild portal hypertension, coagulopathy, and renal insufficiency. Below are the embolic agents that are used for this procedure. They include NBCA and a thiodized oil, fibrin glue, ethanol, microparticles such as polyvinyl alcohol and trisacral gelatin, or coils. Ultimately, the embolic agent that is used in this procedure is based on operator preference, and multiple embolic agents can be used in combination. Below are the steps to the procedure that we have been discussing. While there are two approaches for performing portal vein embolization, ipsilateral and contralateral, both follow the same basic set of steps, differing only in the type of embolic agent or the type of catheter used. For the purposes of our demonstration, we will be showing a portal vein embolization performed ipsilaterally. The first step of the procedure will be to achieve percutaneous transhepatic access of the portal system using an access needle such as a 21 gauge Chiba under ultrasound guidance. In this slide, we can see ultrasound imaging 
of the needle and the needle tip entering the portal vein in the liver body. Next, the stylet is removed from the access needle and contrast is injected into the needle under fluoroscopy to confirm access into an acceptable portal vein branch. On this image we see just that. We see contrast leaving the access needle and entering the portal vein branch which we accessed in the previous slide. This confirms the positioning of our access needle. A 0 .018 gauge guide wire is advanced through the needle into the portal system under fluoroscopy. In this image we see just that again. We see a guide wire leaving the access needle and traversing the portal system. In this case it was going from the right portal vein to the left portal vein. A transitional dilator system such as AccuStick is used to transition from a 0 .018 wire to a 0 .035 wire. Once this wire is in place, we can exchange the transitional dilator system for a 6 French vascular sheath and then place a 5 French pigtail catheter. The purpose of this catheter will be portal venography, which is performed to assess portal venous anatomy and identify portal vein branches to embolize or spare. In this image, we see a pigtail catheter leaving our vascular sheath and traversing the right branch of the portal system to enter the main portal vein. It is from this point that contrast will be released and move with the flow of blood into the portal system. In this image, we can see the left branch and the right branch. And coming off of the right branch, we can see multiple branches which will be embolized. These have all been labeled. This is an image of an early phase portal venogram on DSA. We will be using these next three images as an example of how the venogram will change after embolization later in the presentation. This is a late phase portal venogram and this is a parenchymal phase portal venogram. Once the anatomy is confirmed, the pigtail catheter is replaced with a reverse curve catheter and all target branches of the portal vein, with the exception of the one that was initially accessed, are sequentially embolized. If the interventionalist would like, portal pressures may also be obtained, so that if evidence of portal hypertension is present, the procedure might have to be aborted. In this slide, we can see the reverse curve catheter in position, and we can see embolic coils in both the first represented by the star, and second, represented by the plus, target portal veins. You will note that the third portal vein branch to be embolized, the one that was accessed initially, has not yet been embolized. In the next three slides, we will see side-by-side -side comparisons of pre- and post-embolization portal venograms in order to better demonstrate what stasis looks like. As you can see, since the coils have been placed, there is little to no blood flow entering the right lobe of the liver, which is the goal of the procedure. After stasis is achieved and the pigtail catheter has been used to perform a portal venogram, we then swap it out for an appropriate catheter in order to embolize the accessed portal vein which will be the final target branch. Since access was achieved through a vein that needs to be embolized, the catheter is withdrawn distally to the point of interest and embolization is performed in this manner. As you can see in the third image on the right, the triangle marks the final point of embolization as we pull out of the portal system. Finally, as the catheter is being removed, the transhepatic tract is embolized to minimize the risk of bleeding. This is a final image of the embolization. We can see that the first tract that was embolized is represented by the star. The second that was embolized is represented by the plus, And the third that was embolized, the excess portal vein, was embolized by the triangle. Finally, in the square, we can see coils in the transhepatic tract completing the embolization procedure.
Once PVE has been performed, the typical wait time for follow-up imaging is four to six weeks. However, research has shown that there tends to be a plateau in hypertrophy around three weeks. Additionally, it is important to remember that the ischemia induced by PVE can also promote hypertrophy of the tumor since this can trigger upregulation of proliferative factors in certain cancer phenotypes. Thus, follow-up imaging is used to confirm appropriate hypertrophy of the FLR, as well as ensure the tumor has not progressed beyond surgical resection criteria. Post-procedure care is the same as many other interventional procedures, analgesics and hydration. General complications i.e. those that could occur during any instrumentation involving the liver, include subscapular hematoma, hemoperitoneum, hemobilia, abscess formation, cholangitis, arterioportal fistulas, and pneumothorax. Complications specific to PVE include non-target embolization and extension of portal vein thrombus into non-target vessels. This concludes our discussion of portal vein embolization. Thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed this video.